So today we're going to have a go at a little um, snow scene Christmas card. And what I've done is I've drawn two squares on the paper that are uh, just slightly smaller than an envelope. It's really hard to make a card and then find an envelope to fit. So you best to start with your envelope, find some nice envelopes, and then you can measure so that your one of these squares is about a quarter of an inch or five mil less than the, uh, the envelope all round. You don't want to make it just a teeny bit smaller. I mean, you can trim it, but you don't want to make it like a millimeter smaller than the envelope. You're going to find that it just doesn't fit in. And then what I've done is I've drawn a horizontal line across. There are no exact measurements for this. Um, you can make it as big or as small as you like. And my horizontal line has been um, slightly wavy. I did use a set square just to make sure that it was straight, but I don't want a dead straight line because this is gonna be the, uh, the, the ground and the snow is gonna sit on here. Then all I've done is to draw a little box shape on top of that and then um, putting some horizontal lines in and draw, joining them up at the side little curved corners here because there's going to be snow sitting on this roof. You can also as well just, um, I've done that with a ruler, but you just kind of adjust that so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit wiggly that bottom line and then you've got a little chimney, little windows with a cross in and I've put a door in the front as well. As I said, this is just a starting point. If you want to do a different design, you know, have a look online, have a look at some uh, pictures of cottages or gingerbread houses and see if there's something, um, something pretty that you like the look of. The next thing I'm going to do is to um, make some snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking fluid on the paper. So if you haven't used masking fluid, um, this is what it looks like. It's um, It comes in a bottle, you get all different colours. I prefer not to use white because um, white doesn't show up very easy. You can't see where you've put it. So this one's blue. I'm not going to shake it, but I will just upend it a few times because um, they can they can start to separate. But if you shake, you get loads of bubbles in it. and then. It's quite easy to uh, to knock this stuff over and make a, a hell of a mess. So what I'm going to do is just decant a little bit of it into this plastic dish. So I've got loads of these little plastic dishes. Use them for when I teach my art classes, when I'm doing my own artwork, if I want to make a wash of watercolour paint. Um, so anything like um, anything like a hummus or those little uh, little takeaway pots you get with your, your onions stuff in with your Indian takeaway, anything like that. Just tip it into there and you'll be able to reuse it afterwards because it's going to set into solid rubber and we can just pick it out and, uh, and clean it and reuse it. Now I'm going to um, use a, um, a ruling pen to apply the masking fluid with and also an old paintbrush to splatter some masking fluid because we want it to look like it's snowing in this picture. Now the reason you don't use a brush with masking fluid is because it sticks the uh, six little brush hairs together. There's various options for uh, applying masking fluid. I really like ruling pens. I just find it the easiest, um, most accurate thing to apply. You find it, you know, the, the, uh, the masking fluid tends to dry in there. You just pick it off. It just is basically liquid rubber and it'll be set in about five minutes. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to just um, pick out some of the details here. So I want to get some um, some snow maybe sitting on top of that chimney along there. Now we're going to have snow on the roof, but there's um, there's no real reason to to pick that out in masking fluid because if you put masking fluid in big areas, it can tear your paper, and it's quite easy to paint around that roof. It's quite a big square shape, so we're not going to worry about that. And now I'm going to put some masking fluid around the windows, like so. And I want it to look like there's, uh, there's snow sitting on the windowsill as well. So I'm going to extend the, uh, the bottoms out a little bit further than the square. I'm also going to pick out that centre cross. So what we're going to have is a dark cottage and we're going to have um, light windows that everything's nice and got a nice lot of contrast. So doing those windows, if the uh, if the ruling pen starts to clog up, you can um, you can just wipe it off on a piece of tissue. But it should be okay for this. Should be done fairly quickly. Now it's important that you do this on dry paper. I'm working on stretched paper today, but. Um, you may, uh, if you don't want to stretch your paper, or if you don't know how to do that, then I do advise you to at least tape your watercolour paper all the way around with masking tape. Masking tape can tear your paper, so don't tape it on the actual bit that's going to be the card. Just tape it on the edges that you're going to cut off later. 
So there we are. I've got a little bit of um, a little bit of snow going on there. And what I want now is I want it to be actually snowing as well. So I'm going to splatter with the toothbrush. Now I don't want the snow to go everywhere. It doesn't matter really because you can um, you can rub it off later. But just for uh, just for cleanliness, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of um, paper along there. And you see the paper's got a torn edge. That's quite important because um, if you have a cut edge on the paper, it really really notices where you stopped it. Now I'm just going to put another piece over here just to cover up the uh, the back of the card. And you can just tear that because it's too big. It's going to hit the light that I've got going on here. A bit more. Let's fold that over. Okay, now to, to fix that paper in place, you can just, again, you can just use a bit of masking tape. Again, don't tape it actually to your card because um, masking tape can tear your paper. So I'm just going to do a little bit of, of taping around the edges just so that it stays roughly put. And, you know it doesn't have to be pinned right down so what I've got now is I've got the house and the sky left and I'm just going to get some snow splattered on there so that it's going to look like it's snowing I'm going to get loads of tiny little white dots so I'm going to dip in you don't want it to drip now if you make a mistake with this if you get a big blob all you've got to do is let it dry and then peel it off absolutely don't um, go rubbing at it don't go um, putting water on it or trying to scrub it out, wash it out. You'll just push it into the paper and you'll never get rid of it. So if you make any kind of mistake, doesn't matter, let it dry, pick it off. What I'm going to do is dip it in there, just the tip. I'm going to point the toothbrush down at the paper. That's really important. So I get a downwards angle so it doesn't go everywhere over the rest of my studio. And I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to pull it in a backwards direction like that, but pointing down. Now, if you can't do that, it's possible to do this by holding a blunt knife and pulling it backwards. If you pull backwards, the splatter goes forwards. Um, do, if you haven't done it before, you know, do have a practice. So there we go. And you can just keep going until you've got as much as you want on there. And what I'm getting is lots of tiny little snowflakes. There we go. Now, I think I should have a tiny bit more actually. What I'm going to do next is, is to let it dry. It's really important because if you put a paintbrush on top of that, um, what's going to happen is the masking fluid is going to get on your paintbrush. It takes no time at all to dry. It's going to take five minutes. So I'm going to come back to that in a second and show you how to start your painting. Okay, so my masking fluid has dried and I've got rid of all the uh, the paper that was around it and now I'm ready to start painting. So what I want to do is I want to get sort of a vignette effect um, so I get this sort of light halo around the cottage and I want to go in with, um, with a blue. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a mixture of um, cerulean blue and um, a bit of ultramarine and the reason I'm picking those colours is because they granulate heavily. Um, and we want that texture in this picture. You could, however, use any blue at all that you like the look of. It's best to avoid using a blue that's really, really cold. If you've got a blue and it's kind of very turquoisey, then perhaps just pop a bit of pink in it because it, it never looks very good if, um, if it's a very sort of icy color. It ends up looking a bit like the Arctic rather than a, rather than a nice snowy picture. So I've mixed some paint up just off camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting some clean water around the top here. So I'm going to paint clean water basically in all of the sky. And I'm not going to go too close to the roof because you can't see where you're painting with water. So it's, um, it's quite important not to go too close in until you've got the paint and you can see where you are. And again, I'm going to stop it so I'm going just around the house, but not touching it. And I'm going to stop it just above that little horizon line we've got there as well, that little line of the ground. So you want a fair amount of water on there, but you don't want puddles. So just a bit of kitchen paper and just dry your brush if you need to, because that will pick up any excess water. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in 
straight away with my blue around the edge of the house. Oh, it's not quite as dark as I want it, so I'm just going to put a bit of extra colour in there. Okay. So you can see, as I get up to the edge of the house where I've come off the water, I can actually, um, I can be quite neat when I get to this part. So we're going to go along here like this. I'm using quite a large brush um, because it holds more paint. Now you can see, because I'm going on to clean water, I've got this nice soft effect happening around here. If you find that starts to spread out too far, you can just stop that happening by um, drying your brush and removing a little bit of the water. It's, um, if the paint is very, very wet, it will spread out too far. You want to work fairly quickly, so before you even put that water on, make sure you've got your paint mixed up ready to go. Because this relies on um, you being able to work while the paper is still wet. And if you don't have everything ready, you start to get in a bit of a bit of a panic and then you find that um, it's all going wrong. So we need to work fairly quickly. So I'm just going to come down the side there. If I weren't working on camera here, I'd probably just be turning this around so I can get to it much, uh, much more easily. But I'll try and keep it up the right way. So I'm going to make those edges of that roof nice and round so it looks like we've got the snow sitting there. I think we'll just round the top off a little bit as well. And we'll take it in down this side here. Now you need to work quickly and, and pretty much leave it alone once you've put it on. You don't, for instance, want to go back and start prodding this bit here that started to dry with a damp paintbrush because what will happen is you'll just get a load of weird drying lines and um, the paint will spread out much further. So you're going to keep it fairly evenly applied. Just pop it on. You're not aiming for perfection, just aiming for that nice pretty glow. And again, um, you're going to need to let that dry before you paint anything that's touching it. But what we can do while that's drying is we can paint the door and the windows because they're not touching the blue. So I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. And this time I'm going to get some sort of red brown paint. I think this is some um, Talon's Rembrandt red oxide, but you could use a Venetian red. Um, you could use a burnt sienna. You could use uh, any colour that you like. This could even be burnt sienna. I need to label my palettes. No, I think it's I think it's the red oxide. In some brands, you get a colour called light red, similar to this. Um, you could even use a proper bright cadmium red or any red that you've got in your paint box. If you've just got craft paints, that's fine too. Um, any red at all, or you know any colour at all to be honest. Okay so that's your red door painted and then we're going to put some yellow into the windows. So I'm going to use a nice bright warm yellow Prop me a, a medium cadmium yellow for this. I did try it earlier in the week with uh, with a darker yellow and like an Indian yellow. Didn't work as well as I wanted, so I'm going to go for a brighter yellow this time. And that's a good thing with things like this. If you're making several Christmas cards, you know you can experiment and um, and when you get one that you really like, you can make lots. So if you haven't uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, do consider doing that. On this channel, you'll find art techniques and art business advice and also little um, little tutorials like this, craft tutorials, but also um, watercolour techniques tutorials. So again, I need to let that dry now because um, anything that I touch now is going to be touching that previous paint colour. So we need to paint the, uh, the, the house itself. We need to paint down here and we also need to paint the, uh, the chimney. But we can't do any of that while all of those other colours are wet, otherwise one will just run into the other. We're also going to use some rock salt for um, a nice snowy technique, a nice icy technique down the bottom. So I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. So 
So those colours are fairly dry and what we're going to do now is just put a little bit of um, shadow on the snow on the roof and underneath the house. You could also, if you wanted to, you know, you could draw a pathway in here. You can add any kind of uh, any kind of other elements or Christmas elements that you like. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some more um, cerulean blue. So you want to use a light blue, but really any blue watered down will, will do the trick. And I'm going to put a bit of cobalt violet in it, but any um, any purple or pink, a little bit. You're only looking for um, a slight uh, purplish blue tinge, so don't go mad on the pink, otherwise you'll have pink snow which might be a little bit strange and I'm still working with the smaller brush and again I'm gonna wet the chimney um, just in case that blue is slightly wet still I'm not going to take it all the way out we're just aiming to get a little bit of an idea of some some shadow on the snow so that it's not completely flat white now we've still at this stage got the masking fluid in. We're, um, we're not going to take that off yet. We're going to take that off right at the very end. So we're going to put a little bit of shadow along the roof there. Maybe a little bit along the top here and a little bit along the bottom edge here. There's still a little bit of pencil here, but you should be able to rub that out when you rub the masking fluid off later on. So just blending that out a little bit. You just get that idea of some shadow on the roof. And then we're going to do the same down the bottom. So I'm going to change to a bigger brush. And again water over the bottom here. Now you want to make sure that that shadow colour doesn't cover up all of the white. It's really important to leave some white on display otherwise it's just not going to look like snow. Now to add to the uh, the snowy sort of crystally icy feeling what we're going to do down the bottom here is I'm going to put some uh, some rock salt on so I've got this um, rock salt or sea salt it's the salt that's um, got the big crystals basically um, you don't use the, the very fine salt it won't work as well now it's it's kind of hit and miss sometimes it works really well you get lovely little crystal shapes sometimes you just get little dots but either way it's going to look interesting so what we're going to do now is just put a little bit of color on here again leaving plenty of white still Just want to blend that bottom edge out and then I'm going to drop these salt crystals on. Now that's already drying so what I'm going to do is just to manipulate that a bit further, get some, uh, get some more colour in there. So I'm just dropping wet paint now around those salt crystals um, and that'll just help them to, to develop those little little shapes and splatters. As I said it's it's hit and miss sometimes you get the most adorable crystals um, forms crystal shapes form with this and sometimes you just get little dots but it's going to give it some texture anyway. Um, I might put a few few more little bits on there. Now this time you're going to have to let it dry for much longer so um, you, you know you're going to have to give it a, a good half an hour or so possibly. If you're doing it over the course of a couple of days, leave it overnight. Um, I'm probably going to get a little bit of um, a heat on mine, artificial heat, so that I can carry on with this video in a minute. Um, but for yourself, just, you know, go off, have a cup of tea and let that get really dry. You may even want to place it near a radiator. Um, obviously, don't put any real strong direct heat on it. But you just want to um, warm it up a bit so that that dries a little bit more quickly. And if at all possible, leave that salt there until everything is is bone dry so i'm going to let that dry for a minute and then i'm going to come back and show you um, how to finish this picture off okay so that previous layer is dry and we're going to put the last bit of paint on this and then we're going to let it dry again before we take the masking fluid off so what we're going to do now is paint the little house and the chimney and you just need a dark colour. Um, I've got some kind of 
Daniel Smith, I think it's I think it's called something like graphite grey. It's a splendidly dark colour, but you can use any dark colour. I would avo avoid using black because black just um, it, it can be um, a little bit too harsh. So you could use um, Payne's grey, you could use sepia, um, burnt umber, any sort of dark colour. So I'm going to use this grey. And we're going to put it just on the chimney, so just using a little brush there, being quite careful. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to paint the house itself. So I'm going to be going around the roof, so I want to get that little sort of... Um, the idea that it's uh, it's got that wiggly edge in it. Just going to go right across all the top of that masking uh, masking fluid and around the edges. You need to be fairly careful when you're doing this, um, but you can paint uh, across the top of the. Uh, with the masking fluid around the windows just be careful not to go onto the yellow hopefully um, that blue you've let it dry enough now if you rush this and if you're really impatient and you start painting it and the blue has not dried then what is going to happen is that will spread that brown or that gray will spread right out into the blue so it's really worth um, letting these things dry properly and again, make the bottom line at the bottom of the house a little bit wiggly too, so that you get the impression that there's sort of snow piled up against the lower part of it. And then you can take that right out. It's important to get this quite dark and then those, uh, those little yellow windows will glow quite brightly. And taking it around the other side here. Now, if you want to know more about the, uh, the masking fluid, or if you want to um, know more about the ruling pens, I'll put a link to some in the show notes. And uh, you, can, uh, you can go in there and, and have a look. Okay, so again, taking that right the way round and up to the door. Everything's nice and dry. If, the, if it wasn't dry, what would happen again is the, this dark colour would run into the door. So watercolour painting um, it really rewards a bit of patience and if you're doing lots of these um, you know take your time over them just do just do one stage you know go off and do something else come back and do the next stage stage by stage by stage if you want to make you know literally dozens of cards rather than making the whole card as we're going to do here from watercolour paper because I'm going to cut this out and this is going to be my fold line here rather than doing that though you can just get a large piece of paper divide it into little squares and just do lots of the uh, the front bits there and then you can cut them out and you can stick them onto the front of card blanks now you want to use um, I wouldn't use PVA glue because um, the paper will wrinkle so if you're going to do it that way then what you want to do is use some um, spray mount um, which works really well or um, you have to be fairly careful with that or you could use double-sided sticky tape or um, Prit stick we have in the UK which is like a, um, a, a glue stick a bit like a lipstick but it's glue I don't know if you have that in other countries um, anything really that's not too wet but you don't want it like I said you don't want to be using the PVA glue because it's just going to make the watercolor paper um, more bumpy right so that's the end of the painting again I need to let this dry so that I can then um, rub off all of the uh, the masking fluid and rub off the salt so I'm going to come back in a second and show you how that's going to look So everything's dry now and we're at the final stage. So what we're going to do now is you're just going to brush off the salt. If you've got any tiny bits of salt that are really um, stubborn, you can use a rubber for this as well. If you're doing dozens of them, you know, it can get a bit, uh, a bit painful on the hands. And you'll be amazed how long it takes until that salt is dry underneath. So in this case, we haven't got the crystal shapes appearing. Um, if you want to see what that looks like, you can pop onto my website and see some other paintings where I've done it. But... Like I said, it's it's not guaranteed. Sometimes you just get these little crystal marks, but actually I quite like these. I think they look quite nice. And then what I'm gonna do now is remove the masking fluid. So vitally important that all the paint is dry, otherwise you will smudge the paint. 
So you could rub it off with your fingers like this, um, but that's a bit, uh, a bit mucky. So what I tend to do is just use a rubber. I'm going to take this across now and we should get all of these little bits of snow appearing. If the masking fluid has got onto anywhere that it shouldn't get onto, you can just take that off there as well. If you've got any um, pencil lines still showing, you can just clean those out as well. If you're not sure if you've got all the masking fluid, then if you just run your hands over and you'll be able to feel actually if there's any areas where you've missed it. It's easy to miss it. I'm going to take all that pencil off the roof there. And there we have it. So what I'm going to do now is brush all of that off into the bin and I'm going to cut this out. Um, it's quite a nice idea if you've got it to use a, a deck or scissors along the edge. You can uh, take this further, you can put glitter on it, you know, sequins, you could put a little sequin star up in the sky. Um, as I said, it doesn't have to be a snowy cottage, it could be a manger or anything that you want really, or you could use these techniques for making other types of Christmas cards. So I'll put some other tutorials up in due course. Um, but this year um, we're going with the uh, the snowy snowy cottage. Um, I actually made this card for my uh, stepsister who was over from Spain. I don't normally hand make all my cards, don't have time, but um, I hardly ever see her. So I thought I'd make something, um, something a bit special and I thought I'd share that with you here. So please like, share and subscribe. Um, I have a Facebook group called In The Studio with Michelle Weber. So if you, uh, if you make any of these yourself and you'd like to, uh, to show them to me and to other people, do pop into the group. Um, you only have to um, find it on Facebook, In The Studio with Michelle Weber, same name as this channel. And, um, and just click the join button, I'll approve you and then you can, um, you can come in and you can show me um, your own Christmas cards.